y'all. I'm Elisa, the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com. And today I have an art journaling process video for you. The goal today is to finish up these art journaling pages that I have been working on step by step. So I started with just working on simple backgrounds and then I added stenciling. Last video, I added a focal point for each page. And today I'm gonna come through and add some finishing touches to wrap up these pages. I will make sure to list any supplies I end up using down below. Otherwise, let's go. All right, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do to finish off this girl over here. She definitely has that Medusa look with the green hair. And then one of you suggested finishing her off her neck, adding some clothes, and that really helped. Once I started sketching in, I'm not a great artist, so I'm just sketching in some easy lines. It kind of gave her some more definition and gave me some inspiration for where I wanted to go. So I um, started with a pencil and I'm com coming in with a colored pencil and I decided to go with green and gold because those are the two colors on the page. And I'm just adding a little bit of color to some of the sketch marks that were already there on this piece. Remember, this was a piece I cut out from a Jane Davenport book, I believe. Maybe this one was Dina Wake now I'm confused it's been a while but just adding a little bit of color in on her face just to brighten it up a little bit and some more shading to give her neck a little bit more definition I'll add in some collarbone shading in just a moment just to like I said add a little bit more interest and it really helped define her and give me some inspiration on how to finish her off. So thank you to whoever suggested that. I am super pumped with how um, she came out. Now, once I finish adding a little bit of color, I wanted to brighten up her hair. When it went onto the denim, it got super dark and it just felt like it wasn't really matching very well. So I wanted some more um, pieces that were going to go from the paper that I had collaged on onto the denim that is underneath just to connect the two pieces a little bit better. And so I went with silver and I'm using Jane Davenport's um, acrylic paint and I'm laying it on pretty thick because it is going to soak in even with what's already on this page. Um, that denim just likes to soak in paint. So I am just being crazy. I'm trying to add some strands of the silver gray hair kind of reminds me of myself I don't know about you guys so I wasn't able to get my hair um, done for a long time because of the pandemic and still haven't been to get it cut properly but in the midst of this time I've decided to let my gray grow in and it's a little bit traumatic to see how much gray it actually is but I'm trying to go natural so we'll see how that ends up and here is the real finishing touch. So the power of words is the title of this um, video. And I am adding words to all of these pieces just to finish them up, to add um, a focal point as far as a theme. So um, the word that I'm adding here is uniqueness. And I'm going to end up adding the phrase, your uniqueness is your magic and i just think this girl on this page whether she's medusa or not is um, totally unique and i love her look and her attitude and your uniqueness your magic um is actually a quote uh, from Medusa. So I'm just using a Sharpie pen works really, or Sharpie marker works really well on top of this page. So it's allowing me to kind of go back and add some faux um, hand writing, hand lettering things to thicken up some of the downstrokes there since I can't really do that on the fly with um, acrylic paint very well. So I'm just being able to use my marker and then I'll add the Medusa there at the bottom thickening up a few pieces here. And in the end, I, I'm trying to figure out where I want to add it. I decided to do the Medusa at the bottom um, because I liked, I don't, I didn't want to cover up her hair right there in the middle. I didn't want to add more writing on top of that. So I add Medusa at the bottom. And then you're going to see that throughout this video, I end up using my Posca paint pens a whole lot. One of the reasons is they sit right on my desk. So I always remember to grab for them. And they are just letting me add some of the finishing touches that I'm wanting to add. They're great for adding lettering. They're great for art journaling. I have the broader tips. I would love to get some more fine tip ones. Um, 
I just, paint pens are something that I'm really enjoying recently, especially in my art journaling. So I'm adding a few highlights here and there to the words uniqueness, magic, and then Medusa there at the bottom because I feel like it gets a little bit lost. Um, the highlights really help the words pop off, especially this word magic that is over the top of one of the hearts in the background. It could be really easily lost. So adding a few highlights there and then this page is officially done and I am loving how it came out. This one quite possibly could be my favorite. All right, so now I take my attention over here to the right side of the page and I'm just starting, I had already had the white paint pen in my hand, so I'm just adding a little bit more highlight to some of these vines. The main goal for me on this page was A, to add a word like I am with all of the other ones, but also to bring in some more red because that girl has a lot of red on her and she is just kind of really popping off and doesn't feel incorporated into the scene totally. So what I'm gonna end up doing, I speed this up a whole lot, I'm gonna add a red border with my Posca paint pen all the way around the page. And this will kind of ground the page. It's going to separate it from the one over to the left side. So you know that they're two distinct pages. I um, ended up, I was going to do like a stitching pattern, but I ended up wanting to make it a solid border. So you can see I'm just going to color it in and that really frames it out nicely. I love doing that um, on our journaling pages, just adding borders of some sort. And then I thought, well, this girl's obviously bending over. She's smelling something and probably not just a blank vine. So I'm going to add some roses on those vines. I realize this is not how roses grow on I'm sure they grow on bushes. You guys know. I, I've said before, I'm not great at flowers, but that's okay. I'm adding some flowers, some just swirly flower, red flowers here for her to be smelling um, every so often on the vines. And that's just another way to bring in that red, which I really am enjoying. Now I feel like she is feels more a part of the page. Like she's not just, she's in the scene, not just laying on top of the scene. If that makes sense. So that's what some of these finishing details will do is really um, bring it all together. Now I end up deciding I am going to add a stitch around the edge with my blue paint pen and this is going to knock down that red a little bit more, incorporate the two main colors, blue and red, um, and just add a little bit more interest. And then I actually end up going over the top of some of those flowers because you couldn't see the swirl pattern that I was going for on the flowers. So I just add some really loose swirls and because I'm working with a broad tip, it was a little bit difficult. So I just um, worked really hard to not press uh, very hard. I was really light handed or tried to be so that you could see the pattern of the swirls. I knew I wanted to place the title up here above this um, girl's back, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a quote or just bold words. And I finally decided um, that she was smelling the roses and finding joy. And so I just went with finding joy and I looked up several different quotes and there were a lot that I wanted to include, but just decided to keep it simple. So I'm taking that blue paint pen, um, adding some thicker lines here and there on those words so they pop off a little bit more and then you'll see a trend because I am super into adding some highlights so on this page I'm going to come back with that red paint pen and add some highlights to those words in red just so they pop a little bit more I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep going with the highlights as far as adding a little bit of white I opted not to this time but um I, I really like how this page came together. The, the Finding Joy really brought it, filled that space, and it brought it all together. Okay, you guys, this page was hard because I love it already. It already has the words on it shine bright. It's nice and bold. And so all I ended up doing was adding a few little art marks. Again, have my Posca paint pen ready to go. It's in black this time. And I wanted those little diamonds to look as if they were like hanging jewels, like a little chandelier almost. And so that's all I went for on this page. It was almost all the way done. Um, sometimes you have to know when to stop and I could have tried to add more and more, but really the most interesting part of this page is that gorgeous texture in the background. And I really just didn't want to mess with it too much. So that's that on that page. 
Okay, for my last two pages, these were a little bit tricky because I wanted them to relate to each other. Unlike the first two with the Medusa and the girl um, smelling flowers, those were completely unrelated. But these with the big I and then the we, they I feel like are naturally going to kind of connect. Even though they don't connect color wise, um, except for the pink, they are going to connect with their words. So for this side of the page, I am adding in the word am, I am, and I'm using the Posca white paint pen, um, making it as bold as I can. And that girl is going to make some statements about who she is and how um, complex she is. And then over here, I decide to go with we are, and I end up I have to think about it for a little bit. So I end, I put the R there and then I'm actually gonna go back to the I am side. Um, and as I'm filling in the I am side, I'm also trying to think of where I wanna go with the we are because we're both individuals, but we're also a community. We're all together. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of bring those two ideas together. And so we'll see how it plays out. I decided that the A and the M were not defined enough. So actually I'm taking a micron pen. This is in 0.05, so not very thick, but I am just gonna outline the two letters because I just want them to be a little bit more defined. And I wanted to bring in a little bit more black because I'm going to use this pen for another part of this page. After I finish um, outlining, I'm adding in words. And these are words that just encompass who this girl is, kind of who we all are. Words like, I am chosen, I am here, I am seen, I am loved, I am cherished, I am alive. And on the top half in these blue circles, I'm going with um, really kind of what we see as positive words. I'm safe, I am strong, I am power. I was gonna put powerful, but it really didn't fit. So I am power, I am rowing, and I am learning. Then on the bottom half, on the other side of the circles, I'm putting in what some people see as more negative words, but I just don't. I am weak, I am listening, I am humble, I am here, I am mild, I am quiet. I am um, that one. I forget what I was going to put there. Anyway, some of these um, didn't get completely. I am becoming. I am um, smiling. I was just filling in. I am here again. That was a big word that was coming out to me. So just a few light words in there. And I think that has um, an interesting message. I liked, I liked how that one ended up. Now I'm adding a little bit to the we over here. I felt like uh, adding these highlights brought it again into the page a little bit more because those letters again felt kind of like the girl on um, the roses page that they were just laying on top and not incorporated. And then I'm going to add the words, we are here. And that was just kind of something that was sticking out to me. We are here in this time. Um, we don't have a choice about where we are. We are here and we're going to live in this time. I had a lot of you comment that this felt like a graffiti wall, this last page, and so I decided to go for it. And I am doing the messiest paint splatters I have ever done. So the more water you add to the paint, the bigger blobs you're gonna get. And usually I try to have kind of an even splattering, but this time I went with like an all out, I kind of just wanted to throw paint at it, but that wasn't really gonna work out in my art journal. So I am just going for it. And I'm gonna, I started with the black and then I'm coming in with this bright azalea pink, which is a little bit hard to see here on the computer screen, but pops really nicely. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna have some pretty thick areas and I love it. I love how all of these splatters came out and I feel like the messiness kind of really worked on this page, adding the yellow. And then I will come in kind of with a teal blue. It wasn't exactly the right blue um, as the W, but close enough just to bring in a little bit more of that color to the page. I am so pleased with how all of these pages came out. This was such a fun process to go through and work through with all of the different stages. And it really ended in some different results. So I think it's something that um, if you are an art journaler, you may want to try building pages um, kind of in this manner. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. Down below in the description box, I have all of my supplies linked as well as a link to join my email newsletter that goes out every couple of weeks with crafty talk and organization tips. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.